Hey kids, you're about to listen to a comedy podcast. That means that all of this is medical advice. If you need medical advice or medical care, please contact your doctor. Welcome, welcome, welcome everybody to Ron and Sheila Dawn's 33rd anniversary wedding vow renewal ceremony. Please be seated. The ceremony will begin shortly. Introducing your host, Dr. London Smith. Hello, and welcome to the Jock Doc Podcast, where we discuss fitness and health, and how to incorporate our modern understanding of science and medicine into our daily lives, but without it being so boring. I'm your host, Dr. London Smith.com. I'd like to begin by apologizing to our listeners. We received some feedback about the excessive amount of technical medical terms that I've been using, such as exogenous glucocorticoids and editing bay of pigs. So I'll try to temper my terminology to a simpler one in the future. Here to help with that is our producer, Cameron. Okay, well, you got a lot coming by here. Hot dogs. Um, Two hot dogs. Yeah, that's uh, which is more than I expected you to actually get to get. I'm sorry, we should, I guess, clarify what's... Yeah, I guess we should. Why you would have two hot dogs? We sort of double booked our recording time. It is at the same time as a vow renewal from our friend Sheila Dom. Uh, f- f- guest. Uh, guest. Current guest. Frenemy? Yeah. Uh, I, I like to say now, I don't even have, I don't have a problem with Sheila, but, but th- this guy she keeps renewing vows with. That, oh, you hate Ron. You hate Ron. Yeah. God, I don't want. I like. I. I don't want to hate on someone, but like, and he doesn't talk much, but it's it's what he's what comes in between the words. Yeah. Well, that really gets. I to mean, me. I think he's he's like mute. So uh, all time is between the words. Ron does have a very threatening aura, but that's something that I really like about him. That's one of the reasons, many, many reasons why I chose Ron as a partner. People are not going to mess with me when, when Ron's around and he's tapping his steel-toed boots in your direction. I don't think so, buddy. Okay, yeah. This, this is Sheila Dawn, everyone. Welcome back, Sheila. Thank you. Thank you guys for helping me with this event. I know it was short notice. Uh, Ron just came back yesterday, so we're going we're gonna to do it right. We're going to celebrate his homecoming and do a vow renewal because... Things have not been good between us for a while. This isn't y'all's first vow renewal either. You've done this a few times, right? Yeah. Yeah, what of it? I don't, I don't think it's working is what I'm trying to say. Well, okay, the, the fastest way to fix a marriage is with renewing the vows, right? Like, that's the, yeah. that's the main Have fix. a baby immediately. Uh, yeah. Get a bunch of dogs and... Yeah, renew your vows. But I'm saying you did the, you guys did this like six months ago. But it's fine. We're 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 happy to help. The kids, the grandchildren, for people who don't remember, Sheila Dawn has got how many grandchildren? I've lost count. I don't. I, they move around too quickly that I can't really pinpoint how many. Yeah, and they hate it whenever you try to fence them in or use a net. Oh, that makes them very angry. Do you, ho- do you hose them down every once in a while? Because they're looking pretty ragged. Uh, yeah, they play. They run through the sprinkler. They dip in the creek. I did notice on our way in. Yeah, the sprinklers were going very hard. I'm assuming in preparation for the formality of the event. Right. We've got food being delivered. They need to be clean for this event. Oh, well, the food. The food's here. I. It's I. It's hot dogs, right? I've got two hot dogs here. Yeah. Is, and is that too many? Well, I guess one for you and one for me. Uh, and Ron's going to be too busy working. So. Yeah, they're kind of both for me, but I figured I could sell bites. That was kind of my plan. Two bucks a bite. Two bucks a bite? They're very good bites. All right, well, so anyway, so Cameron has the catering taken care of as much as it's going to be taken care of. Hot dog. I have two hot dogs. Two bucks a bite. All right, so, um, yeah, as you were saying, it's vow renewal time, and I have been asked to not only do my podcast at the same time, because that's, we double booked, uh, but also to officiate the wedding. So 
if I seem a little scattered today, uh, you know, do, officiating the renewal of vows, especially for one of my arguably enemies, uh, I guess that's that's why that's why it sounds like this. Well, you just like to run your mouth. That's my only issue with you. And the reason I had you do this is because you're the highest level of job that I know. Thank you. People don't say that enough. I, you're talking about the... the I, I bought one of those chairs from, from a lifeguard, so it, it does sit me pretty high. You're keeping a good eye out for all of my feral grandbabies. All right, uh, Cameron, we have a sponsor today. Whoa, no way. Yeah, yeah. So it's, it's Caldera Lab. Um, we all know first impressions matter. And if you're not taking care of your skin, that will be the first thing someone notices. And they'll think maybe that you're not taking care of your skin. And they, they, people like to see people with good skin. So show them you do have good skin and you do care about it by uh, using Caldera Lab, where compliments are guaranteed. Cameron's also been sort of... Um, pushing his own it's not a competing product he called it a complimentary no it's a complimentary product that you put on before you put on the caldera stuff if you had listened to our episode a little while ago i i talked about the product i'm giving to my friends and family for christmas um called cameron's crustables and this is the fun part of diy products is i don't know how it's going to turn out necessarily did it start out as a peel no when I gave that gift to my friends and families, Cameron's Crustables, I did not realize it was partially a skin peel. Now I know. You, you weren't willing to get it near your skin was part not of Not at issue. all. It burns like hell. Yeah. So, so Caldera Lab creates high-performance men's skin care products, and the regiment leads off their product lineup. It's a twice-day routine to transform your skin. Caldera Lab knows that the skincare world, it's been heavily female-driven, and it's been the Wild West for men. So that's why they're making the solution simple. Uh, the regimen includes three products, the clean slate, the base layer, and the good. The clean slate starts and ends your day. This face wash leaves all skin types refreshed. The base layer is the daily moisturizer to hydrate your skin and jumpstart your day full of confidence. And then the good is your go-to multifunctional serum at night to help your skin look tighter and smoother, as well as help reduce the uh, visibility of wrinkles and fine lines. Every drop of that serum is packed with 3.4 million antioxidants to protect your skin. And uh, so Ca Cameron has been, there, there's, there was a lawsuit. Oh, sure. Right, I mean, do you like, want to address this right now? I'm really busy, but I guess, sure, I, I can take some time out of my schedule, I guess, to... Sure. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it's just like... Because once again, as you're, as you're pushing your product, and like you said, it's basically... Like, a chemical peel sounds like actually a nice version of what it is. That wasn't even what the lawsuit was about, correct? It was the fact that Uncrustables... And Crustables. Yeah, so this is... this To me, I didn't... I had... I've only handed this out to friends and family so far. I have not even sold this product, but yes, I registered the domain name Cameron'sCrustables.com, and I immediately had to take it down because I was attacked by these lawyers at the Uncrustables company, even though I've told them a million times, A, we're complete opposite products. Mine is creating more crust. Yours is removing the crust. We're sort of enemies. Which doesn't help in a lawsuit, by the way, to say we are sort of enemies. Yeah, I mean, I probably shouldn't have said that, especially because I said, like, I'm representing myself in court, and I did say that at the, yeah. I'm looking at possibly a new name, or Uncrustables will be looking for a new name pretty soon. Right. But right. regardless, if you're interested in Caldera Labs, I recommend as just a comp compliment starting off with you know the uh cameron's cameron's crustables which will be in stores tbd all right well and and the caldera lab icon eye serum is another one of these pro great products from caldera it addresses the three most common skin concerns around the eye which is fine lines dark circles and puffiness and that those are all things that cameron's crustables will cause so you do need the caldera to sort of you know counteract that negate yeah. yes uh, it, Caldera Lab is the leader in men's skincare, made with only top tier ingredients. Clinical trials have found that 94% of men's skin showed an overall younger looking appearance after using Caldera Lab for a few weeks. Uh, just use it morning and night to reduce wrinkles, fine lines, and signs of aging. And just for our audience, we have an exclusive offer. This is our best offer available anywhere. Use code JOCKDOC at calderalab.com and get 20% off right now. That's 20% off with code JOCKDOC at calderalab.com and make unforgettable first impressions where compliments are guaranteed. So 20% off at calderalab.com with code JOCKDOC. Anyway, I, 
I guess, do we want to start? I, like, I guess, oh, I'm the one who says that we start, right? Yeah, I guess. Okay, okay so everyone gather around. Um, so, yeah, we have the groom side. Okay. <laughs> God, why does Ron look so mad all the time? Like, I understand that he's tough, but it's the scowling. It just seems, once again, it's like if you listen closely between what he says. God, this guy. Okay. So, yeah, everyone take your seats. Yes, no one on the groom side. A lot of children on the bride side. Yes, that all checks out. Okay. Um, I guess, uh, so, so we're, we're gathered here today and uh, to, to reunite two people, if we want to call them both people. Uh, and I, okay, next part is, okay, uh, Sheila, it's your turn to say your vow. Ron, everything about our relationship has been serendipitous, and you know it as well as I. The fact that both of our middle names is Daryl. The fact that when we met, we were running towards the same bear carcass on the side of the road. I love the work that you do for me. I love the many businesses that we run together and um, <clears throat> I think that it's just great to be partnered with you uh, legally forever. Wow, that was beautiful. I like how much love was used as a term never in relationship to your relationship with each other but definitely for other parts and around it. I don't follow, but I never really do follow your elitism speak. So, well, Cameron, can you, can you translate? Do you understand? Dr. London and Ron have a thing. Uh, some sort of beef. I really shouldn't be talking about this in front of all these people. Okay. Um, now I guess it's time for me to read uh, Ron's vows, because once again... In between words is when you really hear the hate from him. And this, so he has to have me read it because he can't stand to just speak, right? This guy. Okay, so. Um, okay, let's see. I got his notes. I got, okay. So I, I admit I got some of these note cards shuffled up a little bit with some of my own things, but I, I, think, I, I think I got it. Okay. Now for today's medical topic, Alzheimer's disease. That sounds like Ron. Alzheimer's disease. Classic yeah. Ron. Alzheimer's disease is by far the most common cause of dementia. Prevalence of Alzheimer's disease increases with age. And sorry, just as an aside, Ron has a few years on him. Uh, so age is the most important risk factor for patients. Our family history is also a risk, especially for early onset Alzheimer's disease. Down syndrome is also a significant risk factor. Alzheimer's disease begins insidiously, but tends to progress at a steady rate, with the average time of onset to death at 5 to 10 years, early stages of Alzheimer's disease. If we can think back for a moment, uh, it can involve mild forgetfulness, an impaired ability to learn new material, Wish I could forget poor, perform yeah. poor performance at work, poor concentration, changes in personality, and impaired judgment, including inappropriate humor. Some might argue <clears throat> that Ron has undergone a bit of a change himself over the years. I mean, Not I, I wouldn't say that. He's, he's pretty much just been very mad, I think. Well, I noticed that he used to have a bit of a charm to him in conversation. He was hilarious. He would tell all these jokes. He would, he would, he would just he would speak his mind. He would just say whatever was in his head. And I, I kind of love that about him. And now, it's like he's a different person. Again, why are you saying this in the vows? Sorry, back to the note cards. Intermediate stages of Alzheimer's disease can involve progressively impaired memory. Uh, patients may be aware of the condition, yet denial is often present. <laughs> yeah, denial. Visuospatial disturbances are common, such as getting lost in a familiar place and difficulty following directions. 
Patients may repeat questions over and over. Is that an issue you have with Ron? <laughs> Is he doesn't follow instructions? Yeah, a little bit, a little bit. It's just, like when I told him be here early for the the vow renewal. He was early, but like with such arrogance. Oh yeah. yeah. He just walked in with a real pompous attitude. Yeah. And le- he doesn't conform to your elitist agendas. <laughs> And that's why he's my choice. Continue. Yeah, his vows, yes. Uh, In later stages of Alzheimer's disease, assistance is needed for activities of daily living. Patients have difficulty remembering the names of relatives or friends or major aspects of their lives. Huh. You know, Ron hasn't brought up any familiar anecdotes. He hasn't mentioned my name today or in recent past at all. Huh. Alzheimer's disease patients in later stages may also have paranoid delusions, you know, thinking that they're victims of theft, and hallucinations are also common. In advanced disease, patients have a complete debilitation and dependence on others, incontinence of the bowel and bladder, and the patient may even forget their own name. Once again, someone seems to never say it. <laughs> Death is usually secondary to Your infection. Your issue is now that he doesn't say his own name enough? <laughs> Like, you know, I. Dr. London, there seems. There's something deeper here, isn't there? Uh, uh, and I. I hate to be the one correcting you on here, but once again, I'm officiating and I'm reading someone else's sacred vows. So. Okay. Yeah, okay. A patient may even forget their own name. Death is usually secondary to infection or other complications of a debilitated state. Since there's no specific test for Alzheimer's disease, diagnosis is made clinically. Diagnostic testing includes an MRI of the brain, VDRL or RPR to exclude syphilis, a B12 with possible methylmalonic acid level, and thyroid function test. In autopsy, the brain tissue of samples of patients with Alzheimer's disease will have amyloid beta protein and neurofibrillary tangles. Alzheimer's disease, chronic alcoholism, and untreated HIV can all give diffuse symmetrical atrophy on MRI, but we make sure to do an MRI because sometimes there's a chronic subdural hematoma, a slow brain bleed, that can be drained to improve memory. Treatment is as follows. That's that's another thing you've been mad about is Ron won't get an MRI for you. You're like, dude, just let me scan you. Just let me, yeah, real quick. Just once. Here's the thing. MRIs aren't even, like, it's not radiation. It's it's magnets, magnetic resonance imaging. So, like, he doesn't have that excuse. He he tried that at first. He said, like, dude, I don't want that much radiation. I'm like, no, it's, that's not even a problem with it. Kids get MRIs. Like, it's expensive, sure, but, like, if you want a really good test. So, yeah. So, I know. You're, you're just you're really mad about it still. <laughs> okay, so, yeah. So, anyway, you can check. You use an MRI to check for a brain bleed that can be drained, which would improve memory, uh, potentially. Uh, treatment is as follows. Uh, Denapazil, rivastigmine, and galantamine. And those are all equal in efficacy. Uh, those are used to increase acetylcholine level. And finally, memantine can be useful as well. Okay, let me see if there are any more. Okay, and I guess, okay, the next ones must be my notes. Uh, Sheila, my love. Ron, you. that was so romantic. That was really touching. That, I, come here and give me some love, Ron. Ron, if you ever try to leave again, Things will not be good for you, buddy. So make sure that you're staying happy in the barn. Or else you can abide in a different abode. If you catch my drift. What what happened, Sheila? Ron just always tries to run away. And um, unfortunately, that's just not going to work. We've got a lot of businesses and many militia. Of feral grandbabies. I don't have time to do it all myself, so he cannot run. This is what it is. Now, Cameron, I believe that you had a rant prepared uh, because you were angry, correct? I I don't know if it was that it's a concept of a vow in general. Well, yeah, I just don't think it's. I don't think it's happened. Uh, I'm sorry. what, What do you mean? Like. Like uh, that, someone has said a vow before. No one's. Yeah, no, no one can prove it to me. 
show me it. Okay. Yeah, and you know what a vow is, correct? Yeah. Okay. Well, okay. D- can you tell me what a vow is? It doesn't. It's something that does not exist. Okay. So. Okay. So. If I said. I vow this day here and now to only... I've never heard you say that. Yeah, well, this, I'm, giving a theory, I'm giving a vow, though. This is what it would sound like. Okay. Okay. I vow here and now to only eat Lunchables henceforth. Okay. Now what? So that's, that's, what a va- that's an example of a vow. Do you see? No, show it to me. But yeah, that was my rant. Just wanted to say that to everyone. Thank you. Okay, yeah. And that, you will notice on the pamphlets we handed out that that was the next one on the list. Next on the list for the vow renewal is... Uh, Listener feedback? Yeah. Okay. Okay, so first question, and I believe, Sheila, this, it might be helpful for you to pitch in on this. It's from user at Zack Snyder's newest film on TikTok. They said, quote, can you translate this in, into Sasquatch? So, the the word this. Yes. So, they don't actually have a word for this. It would uh, probably be, um, the closest thing would probably be a series of guttural barks. Uh, would, would you mind demonstrating that? Uh. <coughs> That's probably the closest that you're going to get to the word this. Yeah. Right? That's what they said. Can you translate this? Yes. Into that, that Sasquatch? Yes. Okay. So, yeah, that's the probably. <coughs> <coughs> that's, pro- that's probably the closest. Of course, this is the Sabine River Sasquatch dialect. Okay. Yeah. Right. There's going to be a lot of different regionally, you know, things are going to be a little bit different. But as close as I can tell, that's. How is the cryptozoology stuff? Have you seen anything else lately, or is it really just Sasquatches? Uh, well, it's not so much cryptozoology, I guess you would say, but they, uh, I've been getting word through my many networks of a brontosaurus still alive and well in the Congo, kind of planning a little getaway down there. We've been gathering some intel. So we've got some pretty uh, interesting things uh, on the horizon as far as our meat and jerky businesses go. Cool. I, I hope that answers the question. Uh, thank you so much for your feedback. That's a great question. Okay, well, I think we're kind of on a roll now. We, we've done one. Do you want to... Okay, we can read off more of these. Yeah, just um, go through the cards. Yeah, okay. So at Manage Business 867 says, quote, is this the guy who's the medic guy? Uh, so thank you so much for your feedback here. That's really helpful. Um, I, I guess, I don't know who they're talking to. You lately have been getting, people have been calling you, like, thinking you're Dr. Oz quite a bit lately. Yeah, so I'm, Is I that guess, what that person's asking? Are you Dr. Oz? Because you are. He's one of your many characters. Dr. Oz is famously the medic guy. So if that's, as, yeah, assuming that that's what you're supposing here. Yes, I happen to be the medic guy. <laughs> uh, and so be prepared for a lot more of that coming going forward on the podcast, because now we'll have to t- tweak it. So your catchphrase. Do, do, do I do the medic? Do you say do, 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 do the medic? Is that a, like a viral dance? Uh, yes. Yes, it is a viral dance. So go it, ahead. and. It is not viral for the dance, though right it's yeah it's um a lot of people like it's it's caused a lot of hospitalizations it spreads fast so i hope that helps i hope that answers your question uh thank you so much for your feedback this is from the, uh this feedback comes from tiktok on our video of response to take your med schizo this is user at mskba asks why is his head like like the balloon from Phineas and Ferb? Yeah, why? Th- th- yeah, thank you so much for this feedback. We've, yeah, we've been wondering. Yeah. Um, so I, I'll admit I had to look this up. Uh, I, now, I haven't been diagnosed with anything, 
But when I did see how balloon-like my head appeared, at least in that TikTok, I, I do see... I, why? Well, you were the original balloon boy. That's what people used to call you. Yeah. Whenever I climbed in that balloon, and then it was on the news for a while, and then eventually I escaped before they got the balloon down and found that there was no one in it. I, I was the balloon boy. Yeah, and then you like threw up on television or something. Yeah, th- which was not documented until now, but yes. You're Dr. Oz um, and you're balo- the original balloon boy. Yeah. All right, and thank you so much for that feedback. That's really helpful. Um, hearing that I look like this giant balloon-shaped head and that uh, so... Not not just balloon shaped head, but cartoonishly so. That's really helpful and really uh, d- does a lot for my um, lack of insecurity. And we will be pivoting towards talking about things like Phineas and Ferb and large heads a lot more because this is what the listeners want. So Phineas and Ferb is a show. All right, so thank you so much for that feedback. That's really, that's really helping us. All right, uh, next on our TikTok response to Take Your Med Schizo, uh, at Cheap Like Your Mom said, quote, dude needs his meds now, LOL. Thank you so much for that comment. That's, that's really helpful to us. Um, Cameron, is that to you or to me? That was to me. I believe what they're saying is, dude, can you give me some meds? Because I've been handing out like prescriptions and stuff. I've started a little side business. Okay. So they, they need you to run by their place. Yeah, and just drop some things off. Great. Uh, so anyway, thank you for that feedback. It really helps us to tweak this in just the right way to be the content that you want. This comes from our TikTok response to the comment four years and 75 followers well if y'all are just doing it for fun but it won't take off most likely at user at abigville brown said quote you guys are actually so valid 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 or valid i think it's they're trying to say that we're not invalids right oh i think so yeah so like we are walking (laughs) on yeah right yeah, so we we are able to walk around. We're able to um, function. Ambulate would be the term in medicine. We can we can walk. We are able to move and stuff. So thank you for saying that we are valid. I'm really impressed with this astute listener because we're not walking around on the podcast. The podcast is actually an audio format. Yeah, it's a lot of times. I'm so the sitting. fact that they're able to interpret that yeah. and know that we can like move around and we're not bedridden. Yeah, is is pretty cool very insightful and it tells us a lot about our listeners so thank you so much for this feedback this is really going to help us know to navigate okay our listeners know we are able to walk and yeah do activities of daily living um which i'm sure is not the case for all podcasts so we very much appreciate Uh, I guess, so everyone said their vows, we did the, uh, feedback, I guess it's time, do you say I do? Is that, that's part of a thing, right? Do you have to, uh, do you take? I do. Okay, uh, and then Ron, go ahead and say I do if you actually mean it. So just stomp twice. Okay, hold, okay, no, he did, he, he, and he handed me in the next card. Uh, okay, do. Okay, yeah, okay. okay. as you should. Ron, Ronald Daryl Don. Now, can you get back to work, please? Oh, Don't wow. get. He he. I didn't realize when you were saying that Ron like runs away from you that he was he literally runs. He's a speedy little guy. Yeah, but the feral grandbabies have learned to create a dust cloud perimeter. That's what you're saying. So, I mean, if he gets out this time, I don't know. I've tried collars, I've tried uh, leashes, I've tried everything. Oh, but he always figures out a way, huh? Somehow, but not this time. Well, yeah, if he can't see because of all the dust, 
that's sort of surrounding him. He can't make it through. He can't yeah, make it through. He has no idea so. where he is. And as he does better and better, the dust cloud gets, you know, a little bit bigger for him. A little bigger of an area for him to roam a in. A little roamier. Roomier. It's roomier for Roman, yeah. So keep up keep it up, Ron. I've only got a couple of feet right now, sweetie. Man, that dust cloud is going so fast. And that brings us to I think the end of the ceremony where we're about done with I know you got a reception with a lot of um I guess trumpeteers, that's who I've seen standing in line over there. Uh, I don't I don't know that's like, like, is that a band or is that just a bunch of trumpeteers? It's just a bunch of trumpeteers. I like a very triumphant entrance to my reception. And are, the, are they your grandchildren too? Because they're disgusting. So those are my sons. Those are my sons. Oh, okay. Actually. Yeah, I taught them all how to do the trumpet. Okay, well, yeah, we can we can kind of wind this down then. Okay, uh, well, thank you so much to Sheila Dawn for coming on and d- double booking and everything. I'm not the one who double booked you. I asked Cameron if y'all were free that day. He checked the calendar, and I don't, that's something between you two that got messed up. I don't know why you're putting that on me. Well, I mean, I, I thought it was going to be like, a, you know, on a TV show when someone has two dates on the same evening and they're having to, like, go back and forth. I thought it would be like that and it would be a lot more fun. And it, I guess, I, I guess it was. Anyway, uh, thank you to Sheila Dawn. Thank you to our producer Cameron. Thank you to Tehran. Thank you to Digital in the House. <laughs>